Hey guys, it's Janice and Rebecca <laughs> and Sarah from Ozark Family Homestead. And we thought it's been a while since we've done a What's Growing on the Homestead video. And I think it's kind of interesting being that it is mid-December. There are things still growing on the homestead. You would think wintertime, everything's dead. Nope. Not everything's dead. I want to say the lowest we've gotten down to so far this winter is 22 degrees Fahrenheit. 21, I think. 21. Actually. Okay. So there are things growing. Obviously, she's got things in the greenhouse that are doing great, but there are things that are not inside a greenhouse that are doing really good. And my hand. <laughs> you see her hands. And so we're going to take you around the property, just show you how things are faring, and uh, and we'll identify the things that are growing well too. So, here we go. All right, the first things we have here, these are just some mint. Now, there's not much to them at this point, but there is still green, and you know, they're still growing. So, this one here is my peppermint, and this one too is my spearmint. Again, just little bits. I'll show them these too, I will. She's excited. This is your tour guide, Rebecca. <laughs> Now, in this herb bed here, there's going to be some oregano. Like, this is a little spot of oregano right in here growing. Most of it is gone, but right in here, there's some oregano there and a little bit back here in the back. This is where the sage is, just this one little bundle. And I've put some dead things on top of it to discourage chickens from getting into it. But this is what my sage looks like in the winter time, mid-December. Here in Missouri, we've been zone 6B forever, and the USDA just recently changed it to zone 7A. So that is where we're at right now. Again, just more oregano. You know, this is all oregano right in here. I really have no intention of touching any of this oregano. I kind of like it coming through the rocks there. <laughs> I have no intention of disturbing it through the winter but it does still grow. I guess if I wanted to use some in our food, I could, but I typically do not. So, right in there. So that's all that's in the herb garden for right now in this area. All right, I'm now back here in the old orchard. Those of you that have watched our previous videos about what's growing on the homestead will know this is the original orchard that the, uh, the first homeowner had put in. It did not do great, so he then established a new orchard in another area of the property. But we do have uh, some pear trees and apple trees still in this area. Right now in December, the only thing with any leaves on it is my little magnolia tree here. We've just had this one for a couple years. And, you know, it does, being a magnolia tree, it keeps its leaves all year round. So I do have that, but the pear trees are bare and the apple trees are bare, but this is the time of year when we need to prune everything, and that is a hefty job as well. This one right here is dead and needs to come down still. That's been started, but not finished, and then this is a smaller apple tree. Oh, right here, you can see a little bit of the leaves still on it, but it's a smaller one that we put in just recently, so. At this point, I think we'll move down to the new orchard and it's gonna look very similar, but then we'll make our way around to the main garden because there's things growing in the main garden and the greenhouse. Look at them girls jumping. Oh my goodness. Abigail. I look at me. I look at me, she says. You're getting so big, baby. <laughs> Abigail's just showing off. Oh, you jump big. <laughs> Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. All right, down here. I got girls on the trampoline over there. <laughs> but we're down here um, making our way into the new orchard, but this is where the garlic bed is. And we have a little bit of the garlic that is actually coming up. If you can see the little green sprouts. That is garlic, and that'll just get bigger and bigger over the winter. And all these first three, here, Sarah, go stand where the garlic bed ends so they can get a better visual there. Yeah. 
garlic is planted all the way up to there. So just right around 1,000 cloves in there-ish. <laughs> kind of lost count, but there should be about that much. But these will grow all winter long. They're very hardy, and they'll be harvested sometime July-ish. <laughs> so this is the asparagus bed. I know it looks like overgrown weedy mess, and some of that is weeds, but a lot of it are the asparagus ferns that just kind of drop their little, these little red, can you see those little red balls there? And kind of drop those down and uh, we'll mulch this and clean it up before everything starts popping up in the springtime. And then the rest of the fruit trees, apple trees, pear trees, peach trees, you know, there's just no leaves. Nothing really too exciting to see along here. There are grape vines over here where these white posts are. There are grape vines over there, but again, no leaves whatsoever. Here, let me go over here and you can just see the, the bare vines. So, this is the boring part. We're gonna make our way over to the greenhouse next and we'll show you what's in there. All right, coming on up here to the greenhouse. And this is kind of Sarah's domain here. And I like seeing all the nice green. There's so much, so much pretty in here, Sarah. Okay, you're gonna have to give us the grand tour and tell us what you've got kind of growing. Let's just start here. Okay, so we've got lettuces and onions all through here, a rogue carrot that I'm letting go to, to seed. Okay. Uh, here I had lettuces. I'm thinking a caterpillar some got into them. Oh, really? Yeah, because I had... Okay, it was done out in an, Amer in, a, in an American flag is what it was oh. done in. I had purple bok choy, and then I had purple and green for my uh, stars in there. And then I had red lettuce and green lettuce and red oh. lettuce and green lettuce. And it just got all really pretty. You can see I it's, have stuff coming back. Yes. So I'm going to... It ate it down, didn't it? It did. So I do have stuff coming back, so I'm going to wait and see. Maybe I can get it to go back. Okay. But, yeah. You got some brassicas back there, it yeah, looks like. Yeah, um, I'm thinking this is broccoli okay. there. Okay, the taller ones there. Yes. Then I have Swiss chard here, which was also ate down. Okay. And I had to put diatomaceous earth on there. That's, That's why what it's the white. white. Yeah, the white on there is diatomaceous earth. Then I had mixed lettuce, and somehow the um, caterpillars didn't get to those. Okay. So I don't know. Rocket going to seed here. This is rocket here. Now this rocket... It's lasted so many years. Yeah, this is this has been here for several years, and this is a green. These little leaves here are edible, but it's got the flowers on it, so it is going to seed. But um, here, I've got, let me scoot down I'm here. Sorry. I've got brassicas here. This is broccoli gone seed. This all, all the big tall ones you see. That's yeah, bro that's that broccoli big, gone. Tall one to there. Seed. And then I've got purple and green cabbage here. Okay. I've got kale here. It's also trying to bolt. As you can see, it's getting super tall with mm -hmm. bolted stuff in the back. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've got m more. I, this is kind of just a mix here. I've got onions. I believe this is also broccoli. I've got some bok choy. I love, and some let me, I'm going to show them bok choy here. I just love bok choy. I think it is such a cute, pretty little plant. And it's really, I don't it tastes good. Mm -hmm. too. But this would be a lettuce green here, the spiky one. Yes. Yeah, you know, that's a lettuce green right next to another bok choy. And the green onions, Sarah, they just look beautiful. I know. They are These very are happy. These are the ones I did, by the way, I did from seed. Oh, really? Yes. That's awesome. And these turned out the best. Yes, they did. Um, and then this is, Bre this is Brussels sprouts here. Okay, is it three plants that you I have in so. there? I believe so. Three big plants in this one pot, uh, Brussels sprouts. We've never been very successful with Brussels sprouts. Yeah. But we've never had them in the greenhouse, though, either. So I'm hoping we get something. Yeah, them. that would be nice to get something. Swiss chard here and a uh, rogue, rogue yeah, Show them the Swiss chard there. Swiss chard yeah. in diff different colors. Different varieties there of the Swiss chard. And again, those are used for salads and stuff, too, is what you we use them for. I've got beets that I've actually kept going for uh, about a year now. Okay. So they're basically just used for salad greens. Salad greens, yep. And then 
Over here, yeah. uh, this one, uh -huh. um, I've got green onion and uh, some few radishes in and there. some radishes. Okay. And then this is spinach. I need to weed it. Okay. Sadly. Some of them are a little harder to get to. Yeah. And then this one back here, that is the big rosette, is a beet. A red beet And then there. it's got one onion in there. Okay. This is all my brassicas here. Do yeah. you see? This has definitely gone to seed. You yes. see all the little seed pods there on this. And then I've got cabbages here and more Brussels sprouts. This will be a broccoli or cauliflower. Not quite it, sure. Yeah. <laughs> not sure on that, that one. Then I've got more bok choy here. Look along how with cute. Uh, another brassica that I cannot identify. Look how cute all that bok choy is. Little baby bok choys. <laughs> this is my big cabbage. Okay. I'm so proud of. Yeah, its leaves look pretty. Mm -hmm. And then he's got a little friend that I don't know if that's a broccoli <laughs> he's or. He's got a little friend. I don't know what that is? I've got onions and strawberries in here actually. Mm -hmm. And then more. I the, believe these are both Brussels sprouts. Okay. And I've got radishes down in, in there here. amongst them too. Yeah. Okay. Now you've got herbs behind you. I can yes. see some of that. Let me try so, to squeeze in here. I've got snapdragons and rosemary. And then I've got, whoa, I almost stepped on stuff. Yeah. It's a tight squeeze in here. Good. Uh oh, I'm knocking stuff over. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> I'm, I'm knocking stuff over. <laughs> Miss Lisa, if you're watching, we need you to get your other greenhouse put up because we're. <laughs> We're maxing out this one, aren't we, Sarah? Okay. Okay. Here we're um, coming in. Basil, which I'm surprised is still alive really? after it's gone below freezing in here. Yeah. But if if you notice, the stuff that is closer to where the light would be coming in first thing mm -hmm. is still alive. Well, the shorter ones are dead. Okay. Very odd. Okay. Um. Then I got some wildflowers that are still making it yeah like this one right here is still but then still of course green. my more summery wildflowers have passed by like my cosmos it okay. did not make it the first big drop okay um snapdragons kind of suff suffered a bit but they always seem to pull through okay yeah and snapdragons thought, you pulled them through the yeah. whole winter one calendula calendula right in there in a in a boot in a snapdragon <laughs> and then lavender here I've kept this going for a few years. Yep. I got my first bloom this Lavender, year. Lavender we thought was kind of difficult, but yeah. this one has done well. Mm -hmm. Okay, your little ferny. Yeah, this is yarrow. Yep. I'm hoping to get blooms off of it the, um, next year. And yarrow is a medicinal herb. Chamomile. I'm surprised I've actually gotten yep. to stay alive. And then just now, some more chamomile. Chamomile. I don't know. I think chamomile? it's if you have an English accent or not. Is it chamomile if you're... British, I think. Maybe. Maybe. You guys tell me if you say chamomile, chamomile. I don't know. We say chamomile around here, but maybe that's wrong. Okay. Is that all your pots and stuff? I think so. All right. So, yeah, we are able to eat lettuces out of here. And here I'll show you. She's got all of her, um, oh, these salad containers. We use as miniature greenhouses. All of these jugs here will be used for winter sowing, and that'll usually get started sometime around January. So that is what will be on the to-do list soon. Okay, I say let's head out to the main garden yeah. and show them the things that are still growing out in the main garden. One thing, before I step out the door here, um, I did want to point out that in order to keep this warm enough to keep all this growing, most of the time it's just fine. It um, The sun shines in through the day and the greenhouse will hold the heat overnight. But there are some nights when it just gets really, really cold. Like when it gets down into the 20s, we would lose things if we did not put a secondary a heat source in here. And that's what these little concrete blocks are right here in the middle. We do heat our house with our wood stove. And at night, when we know the temperature is going to be really low, we'll get a bucket of wood ash and set it out here Fresh on these. Wood ash. Yes, still warm, still hot, maybe even with some orange red coals in it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and set it out here, and it'll keep everything warm overnight. I will say too, last winter it got down to, I think it was negative five was the temperature, but then you know the wind chill was even more than that. 
And at that point, the wood ash, the hot wood ash, wouldn't even handle those cold of temperatures. So we did take one of our solar generators, and we have a whole video on a solar generator, and then plugged a, um, oh, a heat lamp. Yeah. Yes, a heat lamp like we use for our chicks in the broody pen in the springtime, and uh, was able to plug that in out here. Because we don't have electricity anywhere out here, but with that solar generator in here, with the heat lamp connected to it, it was just enough heat to keep things from dying off. So that is what we do use out here if we need to, but we usually don't. Now we'll go to the main garden. <laughs> Rosie's glad to see you. Hey, Rosie girl. <laughs> she says, oh, I love you, love you, love you. I love you, love you. <laughs> Yeah, she's our livestock guardian for down here where the sheep live. Here, can you see? Let me see if I can zoom in some. We've got some sheep back there. Oh, Rosie's hitting the fence. Let's see. Can you see the sheep back there? They're grazing. There's not much grass now, but they are trying to graze. They do get hay and stuff as well, too. But Rosie keeps them safe. And Daisy the cow is back here too. So is Brisket, her bull calf, and some chickens. They're back over there. And Rosie does a good job. <laughs> you pretty girl. Where's Daisy at? Hmm? Where's Daisy at? Yeah. She's out there with Brisket, I think. Yeah? We can go see? Yeah. <laughs> There's Daisy. A what? What is it? A jet. A jet. Yes, a jet up in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go see Daisy. Yeah. I'm running. You're running. <laughs> Daisy's having some supper. Yes, yeah. yeah, she likes hay. <laughs> she make a mess. Daisy, you make a mess. Daisy girl. Oh. What's that sheepy doing? Silly sheep. Silly sheep. <laughs> yes, look at them. Yeah? The baby sheep and the mommy sheep. Yeah. Yeah. There they are. They're a big cow. Yes, and Brisket's a big cow too. And Piggy. Mm-hmm. said, so let me in there to eat, too. Oh, here while I'm looking, I guess I'll show you the... Oh, hi, Caddy Cat. How are you doing, girl? Oh, don't scare her. You scared her. Caddy Cat is our oldest barn cat. She's been with us for 13 years. So, she is an old girl. She's a good girl. What dog bark? The dog barking. Okay, the pecans, the pecan tree is uh, dropping its pecans. If you can see here, the, um, oh, where they've opened up and uh, dropped pecans on the ground. Here, this one right here. Let me see if you can see. Hold on, baby. I want to show the pecan. It's still inside. Oh, and here's one right here, too. It hasn't exactly fallen out just yet. There, see if that's clear. So, these are the smaller pecans here. And we have some bigger pecans too. Okay, we are in the garden. We got all kinds of noises. I got dogs barking, jets going overhead. Wait on me, says the two year old. And Sean has the uh, lawnmower. Going, taking water to the animals before it gets dark. That jet is loud, isn't it? Where is it at? It's a loud one. Okay, here's what's in the garden now. These are our towers um, for strawberries. And they still, they do good over winter. Of course, they're not producing or anything. But they do, I mean, they do still survive. There's little bitty, little bitty leaves in there. So... For the most part, we've got some pretty strawberries that uh, 
hopefully we'll get a good crop in the springtime. So, let me see. We've been working on cleaning it up. Yeah, <laughs> this is it cleaned up, guys. Well, kind so, of cleaned up. So, if you see, if you notice, um, we do use cardboard, cardboard boxes for mulch. And these little bitty pieces of newspaper and cardboard, this would be chickens coming in here and just totally scratching things all up. So that's what all this is. This is not just trash mess. This is stuff that we used as weed barrier and it will decompose in here. So I'm not worried about the cardboard or the newspaper. And we do still have some of the woven weed fabric that's laid out. That's what this black stuff is here. But we have big old, these were sunflower stalks that have been chopped down but not disposed of yet. This is what all the basil plants were this year. Had a whole bunch of basil. There is still some dandelion growing. <laughs> so the green leaves here, not, not the yellow flowers, the green leaves here are the dandelion. And so the rabbits like that for a treat. But what I wanted to show you guys was right in here. I'm gonna get Sarah to open these up for me and show you what's in there. All right, Sarah's got this first bed opened up. Oh, you guys, okay, the only thing protecting all of this from the 22 degree temperatures, oh, the chickens are upset, <laughs> um, is this fabric. The, and this fabric um, can be used for helping with winter temperatures, but also for bugs and things like that too, in the springtime especially is when we use it for that. But uh, you can see there is some browning on here, you know, from the temperature, but there are some perfectly good usable edible leaves down there as well. And we have a really good dish that we call Dutch dish because we cannot pronounce the other I name. I think it's Bo Boring cool or something. Bo 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 and cool. Something, Something like, like that. that. We have friends that came from the Netherlands and they live here locally to us and she shared her recipe and we love it and it calls for lots and lots of kale and potatoes. So amongst the kale here, Sarah, you said you have a little bit of carrots. Yes. That's what these here would be. Yeah. And they're still growing down. Yeah, they're nowhere near. This is a yellow carrot here. A yellow carrot. I like all the carrots in the different colors. Yeah, I do. I like the different colors too. Yeah, they're pretty thin there in the bottom still. They're thin. This would be a red carrot here. But they are surviving. So she's got a red carrot, yellow carrot, just a variety in there. And they're doing good. But this is all kale until you get down here to the end. And look at that beauty. That is so pretty, Sarah. This is my purple cabbage, my best looking one. It is so pretty. I like that. Mm -hmm. Now in your other, we call this the triangle bed, this little small one that's yeah. on the corner. Is it the same? Uh, it ought to be, I think. Yeah. I think this one might have, have it more green. More green yeah, kale? Yeah, oh, yeah. green kale in there. Yeah, that's a different variety. Here, let me come around and I'll show you. Yeah, I've you got, can see a difference in the leaves, guys. I've whereas this is more uh, ruffled leaf yeah. here on this kale so oh, this has more pest damage on it yeah this one that it's one really does hard. but yeah this green kale that's looking pretty good yeah anyway there's enough of it growing oh here's another of the i like the roughly mm -hmm. kind i think they're so pretty i think but, it's blue curled scotch i think is, is that, that the one? variety you think yeah because it's curly yeah so, but between the vast amounts that we have out here and then the bit in the greenhouse too, there's enough for us to make our Dutch dish. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, let's see, is there anything else out here in celery. the- Oh, celery. This was our first year doing celery. Okay, well let Sarah get this stuff back just the way she wants it, and then we'll move on to the celery. All right, so we're gonna go through this tunnel here. This was our green bean tunnel. These are just cattle panel arbors, or cattle panels that are made into an arbor, and these had green beans growing all up it. Um, these were marigolds here down the center. You can still see there's some to grab to pull off for seed even, even though, have you already collected a whole bunch? Yeah. Yeah, so um, <laughs> more seed may not be needed, but down through the middle of the green bean arbor, down on the end, you see that green? Guys, that is celery. This was our first year growing celery. And I was always intimidated by growing it. 
Because you, you have to put it in a trench and then bury it as the frost comes. And I mean, but you can see good. the the green of the leaves. It's a beautiful green. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are doing... This has been hit by frost without any protection whatsoever. Yeah, there's no none of that white barrier on top of this at all. So it's doing very well. Got a few smaller ones down here yeah. on the end. But I'm very, very pleased with this. We have never tasted homegrown celery before. Yeah. So that'll be a treat. <laughs> okay, anything else out here? in the main garden that you want to show everybody at this point? Not in the main garden. Okay. We'll go on up towards the house. Oh, wait. I got some more kale up here. Oh, this um, one here? This is what unprotected kale is look like. Okay. Yeah, no protection on this. It's gotten down to the lower 20s. They aren't as full. They're yeah. They are scraggly. They are scraggly, but, you know, there's still good leaves down here. Yeah. These would be some nice tender leaves that could be used and I'm sure these will go to seed yes. then too in the springtime we always get copious amounts of mm -hmm. kale seeds. Kale could basically go through the end of the world <laughs> and still be fine. <laughs> it's so hardy. Yeah. We like hardy things that grow around here. Okay we'll head up towards the house. We've got some herbs and uh, medicinal things too yeah. to show everybody. Now we are losing the sun. I don't know if the the pink um, shows up well on camera or not. I hope it does. But there's some pretty pink there as the sun's going down. So, Sarah, let's go show them what there is left to see. Oh, these are the big, big pecan trees here with the big pecans. Um, if you can look up there and see the how they're opened, opened up, and the pecans have fallen to the ground. So we've collected some. The crows come and try to eat things up too, so. Okay, Sarah, what do we have? We've got onions in these two towers. Yep, unprotected. Yep. Just green onions outside. Just for green onion tops. Oh, there's quite a few on this one. Mm -hmm. Yep, quite a few in there, so. They do surprisingly well in the cold. Okay, besides those, here comes Bear. Old boy. Old Bear. You big boy. Okay, mullein. in here. Yeah, got some mullein growing in here. And this would be for medicinal. We've got one that's getting kind of... Yeah, the chickens that do get in here. For it, the frost and all. Yeah, the chickens get in there and scratch sometimes. I've got yarrow in the back. Okay, let me get in here a little closer. Sorry. Got some yarrow there. I've got lavender there. Some lavender right here. This is sal sal salvia. Okay. Which I did not know was frost hardy until the frost came and it lived. <laughs> and it lived, yay! Oh, bear. <laughs> He's knocking the camera. <laughs> You're a mess. I've got a bit of phlox still phlox. holding on. Oh, yeah, the pretty flowers. Bear, you gotta stop that. He keeps taking his nose and push it against my arm. He says love on me. And I got a lot of zinnias in here to collect seed from. Okay, and zinnias that have gone to seed. I do want to show them the pots over here okay. because I have some things growing in these pots and we are losing daylight super fast. Yeah. Okay, do you know what these are right here? Snapdragons. That's more snapdragons, they okay. They are very cold hardy. Well, they won't last when it gets super cold, but for right now, Followed us over here. Okay, snapdragons. With, and none of this here has any protection whatsoever. It yeah. just it's exposed to the to the elements here. Um, this right here is lemon balm or yeah yeah lemon balm, and it has done well in this pot for years and years and years. It just does awesome, and it's used for teas. This is whorehound mm -hmm. back here, and it has also done well for years. This is a medicinal herb as well. I hope those leaves show up on there. You can see them. And then we've got some thyme. <laughs> She's trying to lure him away because he keeps whacking my arm. Okay, so some more snapdragon flowers or leaves there. And then this right here, this dainty one, that's thyme that we can use for culinary for cooking with. So here we go. Sarah, we are losing daylight fast.
All right, guys, we are back inside. I'm gonna hang out by the wood stove a little bit. It is, huh, it is a little chilly out there, and it, well, my nose feels red now, and I'm like, so sorry, guys. <laughs> but um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's a little different. It's December. There's not, you know, a tremendous amount to show you all, but I do still think that there are neat things that can grow even when it's in the 20 degree range in the winter time so i think it's neat i hope you do too um if you did enjoy today's video please be sure to give us a thumbs up we would appreciate it and make sure you are subscribed and if you could tell your family and friends to watch ozark family homestead it would help our family's channel grow thank you so much and we will see you on the next video guys bye bye thanks for watching ozark family homestead bye